Well, I was pretty excited this week when the order that I had placed with Sailrite arrived. Now what I ordered was a sewing machine and all of the materials and equipment that I needed in order to build the sails for my Haven 12 and a half. Now before I get started, I should say that I am not sponsored by Sailrite in any way and I paid full retail price for everything that you see here. So I'm going to give you my unbiased opinion of their customer service and their products. So speaking of customer service, I can say right off the top that it has been really fantastic people to work with. When I called and said that this is what I wanted to do was to build my own sales for the Haven, they connected me with Jeff Frank, who is the sale maker there. And he put together an entire list of all of the supplies and materials and equipment that I would need. And he made recommendations on some things. And one of the recommendations he made was that I purchase the LSZ1 Plus. And that is, the plus means that it has a carrying case. And I believe that that's probably what is in this box. Uh, the, this first one was pretty heavy, so I think that's probably where the sewing machine is. And this box is probably the equipment and materials. Um, so at any rate, he suggested this because of the carrying case and mainly because of the environment that I'm in, that that way the machine stays protected and clean from all the other things that go on here in my boat shop. So let's get this thing unpacked and get it put together. So it looks like it came with some uh, assembly instructions and the first thing that it uh, says to do uh, other than unpacking which I've already done is to get the machine uh, put into the carrying case. So uh, they sent pretty much all of the tools that I'm going to need including a little screwdriver and some Allen wrenches it looks like. I'm not sure what that's for yet. Uh, another small little screwdriver, a uh, <clears throat> couple of wrenches, and a uh, looks like a Phillips head and a screwdriver in there. So we'll uh, get started. Uh, read the first part about getting it put into the carrying case. So the first thing the instructions say to do are to back off these little set screws, which is how it, it attaches to the base of the case. So I'm going to back these out and then it said to make sure that they're unobstructed. So I'm going to use this little metal rod that they sent and make sure that it fits all the way in there. Yep. All right. So I've got that done and the next thing to do is to get the base of the case. And the case opens up with these brackets here. Turn it unlock both sides and then that should lift off yeah there we go 
So what it says is to get these little pins so that they're set at about a 45 degree angle like that. So then it says to guide these posts here into these two holes on the back of the machine. And then once that's in there, it says to tighten up those set screws. Yeah, I will see if make sure it closes. Yeah, good. So the next step is to remove these two screws here. It's the Allen wrench that they set with it. And then we need to place this guard on there and put the screws back in. That said, to make sure that you don't make those on there too tight, because this is plastic, and it said you could crack the plastic if you over tighten them. So <clears throat> I've got it just snugged up, and it later said that you may need to adjust that so that the belt doesn't rub on it. Okay, so the next step is to get the uh, timing belt here. And it says move the bobbin forward so that it comes loose like that. And put it over the top there to hold it temporarily. And then we need to back off this pin and it's reverse threaded. So if I go clockwise, it'll come off. And then you put the balancing wheel on there. And make sure that the belt fits in all these little clogs. <clears throat> like so. And then put this back on. Go counterclockwise to tighten it this time. And then move this so that we line up the posi pin with one of the holes like that. So with that posi pin engaged, if I turn the flywheel, you can see that the machine actually operates. So we'll take that pin out until we're ready to do that. So the next thing is on the back here. So the next thing is to install the integrated thread stand, which comes with the carrying case. So it came with a little inset screw here that we need to put on and it came with its own Allen wrench. We need to get this started and then screw that down into the base. nice and snug and then this goes on here with this little thumb screw so that way this can be moved when you're using the machine and then it can be pushed over here when it's got the carrying case over it so the next thing is to put the controls on there now this 
model comes with a LED light kit. And it's magnetic, so that it'll actually attach to the machine like that. I'll get this twist off of here. And one of the nice things about this newer model, from what I understand, that the older ones did not have this integrated plug. So the, this plug here, there's actually only one way to get it on. This way, it won't fit. So put this plug on, like so. Make sure it's really engaged. And then that is where the foot feed, or foot pedal, goes. So we'll take that, undo that cord. Of course, this cord goes into the power. And this one then attaches to the machine. So <clears throat> now what's nice is that there's on the bottom here, there is a place for the light to plug in like so. The light kit also comes with a little uh, self-adhesive tab here that you can apply. And then it came with some little zip ties that you can then put the cord in there to keep it up out of the way. Okay, I'll trim that off later. Well, the next thing to install is a spool pin. And it's this little pin that goes right on the top here. We need to tighten it down with a screwdriver. And it has a little felt pad that goes over the top of that, like that. The last thing to install is this elastic protection strap. And it um, comes with two snaps on it. And there's a snap on the front here and one back here on the back. Now what this is for is you push pull this up in place like so and there's some materials that you'd be sewing that the edges of that case could damage so that elastic strap then make protects your fabric from that so then to put the case top on we would put that back down like so now to put the case on we'd put the cords in this compartment here, like so, and the foot pedal would go over here, remaining cords in, pull the thread holder around, and then put the light in there as well, and then this should just go right up over the top. And it's a matter of turning these knobs and locking it down. So we'll set this aside and let's take a look at the other supplies and materials that they sent. Well, now that we've got our machine all put together, let's take a look at some of the supplies that they sent. So the first thing, of course, are the two sail kits, which would be the gaffed sail kit and the jib sail kit. So the other things that are included with that are, of course, the instructions. So we have here a set of instructions for the jib and a set of instructions for the gaffed. In addition to those, we have um, a uh, stainless steel thimble and this uh, is used to run along the luft of the jib. So some of the other items that, are, that uh, came along with it were, are some extras here. And this is a grommet set for large grommets and a grommet set for small ones. Now this is one of the things that 
Jeff had suggested that I get, which is not included in the kit. And what those are for, they're very heavy cast iron. And so one is for the large grommets like this, and the other one is for the smaller grommets like that. So you simply put those rings in there and you would then basically pound those two together. Now, the trick then is you need to have a hole in your sail cloth. And we, the other thing that he suggested was a set of hole cutters. So we've got a whole set of hole cutters here that range from, I think it's an eighth of an inch up to uh, five eighths of an inch uh, uh, in increments. Now these are pretty interesting and they have this hole so that um, my understanding is that when you use the cutter, the waste gets ejected through that little hole. Now, in addition to that, what came along with it is a uh, cutting block here. And there's two pieces, a, a hard one and a softer one. And the hard one is when you'd be using webbing or something like that uh, to cut a hole in it. And then the other one is for going through sailcloth and softer materials um, like leather or something like that. And it's simply that these go in a drill and then you'd put your cloth on there and you'd drill it down. So that is another thing that he'd suggested. Uh, there's this little hole here and that's if you were to put snaps uh, in something. I don't see that I'm gonna need snaps right yet, but that's what that's for. So if we take a look here in the box of the remaining supplies, we have all different sizes of Dacron tapes. Um, there's a seam um, cutter, some bobbins. Uh, there's a whole bag of grommets here and some extra thread and so forth. So pretty much everything that I need in order to uh, build the sails is included in this box. So the other thing that it came along with was an ultra feed guidebook. And in here it has how to thread the machine. And that's what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get some thread in the machine and do a couple of practice stitches. Well, I've got the machine threaded now, so the controls are pretty simple on this machine. This lever here, um, the, when it's in the up position, it's uh, stitching forward, and when it's in the down position, it stitches backwards, and it's spring-loaded so that when you let go of it, it automatically goes back up. Uh, you can move this down while sewing so that you can backstitch on it. Uh, these little knobs here can change, and what that does is change the, the amount that the stitch is on the fabric. So up here at the top, the stitch would be wider. And if I move this down like this, then the stitch would be narrower. The next thing that's up here is this is the for the zigzag. And five would be the widest zigzag. And one would be the lowest. And of course, zero would be that you're not zigzagging at all, which is where it's at right now. And this lever here that says 
LCR, which is left, center, right. And what that does is it moves the needle back and forth if you're doing a zipper foot or uh, something like that. So this would push the needle to the right side and then this would push the needle to the left side. So it's important. Usually you just keep it on the center. So we'll give it a little test run here. I have a little piece of scrap canvas and we'll put it in here, lower the pressure foot and Now I'm going to try the zigzag, see how that does. Some of these out of the way. Looks pretty nice. Pretty happy with it. Well, I'm going to continue to um, experiment and play around with uh, the machine. Uh, I think maybe I'll think of a smaller project to work on first, maybe like a ditty bag or something like that, before I start working on the sails. Now, I probably won't work on the sails in for a couple of months. I think it's going to be actually a really nice winter project to work on. I want to thank everyone who has helped support this channel. I particularly want to thank the patrons who, without your help and funding, I wouldn't be able to do projects like this or bring future projects to you. If you're not already a patron, I would like to invite you to join our ever-growing community. So that's it for this episode, and I will see you soon on The Art of Book Building.